Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Embertone Chapman Trumpet. Uh, this is Embertone's, I think, flagship uh, library. It's, uh, as you can tell by the name, it's a trumpet library. Um, so the way we're going to do this is the way I always do. I've written a short track in the background. We're going to take a listen to that first, and then uh, I'm going to dissect the track, showing how I used uh, the library in it and which articulations I used to achieve certain sounds, etc., etc. So uh, let's take a listen to the track now and get started. Here we go. So there's the short track I wrote, and as you can hear, um, one of the things that shine out about this library from the start is is the tone of that trumpet. It's a very, very realistic sounding trumpet. I mean, I've, I've got a few brass libraries, and that's there's something about it. I mean, it's the, it's like their magic sauce. I can't quite put my finger on it, um, but it's just got that, that tone. So, uh, what is the Chapman trumpet? So obviously, it's a trumpet library, and. Uh, and compared to some of the other libraries I, uh, I've, I've demoed in the past, this is a bit different in that it's um, it's like a single library. It's a single instrument library. So whereas you've got, uh, you know, things like, like over here, Cine Brass, which has got all the, the brass section, and then you've got Albion, which has got like strings and brass, and, and you know, Symphobia, which has got like the entire orchestra. This is just the one instrument, just a solo trumpet. I mean, you get a tuba as well, actually. I... I, I so I lied, but I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you get the tuber as well. But um, but basically, so it's a, ch a cheap, uh, cheap library to buy. I think it's uh, at the minute, I think it's thirty dollars or something. So it's uh, it's taken a different model from the other libraries in that it's just a single instrument you purchase. And it really is a, a great sounding library. So I'll just play you a few bits first. So this is, you know, what the trumpet sounds like. Tron. Anyway, so you, you know it's got that that awesome legato. So I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. So let's take a look at what I actually did with the track. So the first thing in this track, I, I went for the big kind of as I always do the big kind of uh, like heroic um, vibe. So let's just take a quick listen to this little section here. As you can hear, it's got that very, uh, very strong presence within a within a mix, which is is actually really uh, nice. If I just solo it out with the strings, so no percussion or anything, just. And what I've done here also is uh, is I've layered it with a, um, with the uh, with a solo, not solo with with a string section uh, from Cinematic Strings. So what we're using here is the legato uh, patch, I guess you could say the legato setting uh, of the the, um, of the patch what anyway so, so uh legato so legato yeah i'm i'm mumbling i'm confused what am i doing okay so yeah legato and as you can see each patch um comes with i should really just minimize these for now so you can't see them they're not confusing you so yeah each patch comes with a legato a staccato and a poly sustain and then you get a round robin switch and a stage switch. Stage is essentially the reverb. Uh, and round robin is if you push the same note. 
And I think I think it does a technique called uh, round robin borrowing. So when you push a key, what it'll do is take a note that's um, neighboring it. So like if I push a D, or you know in this case a, a, a flat, it'll take either the A or the G and then pitch it up or down so that it's playing a separate note, a different note every time you push the key. That way you can play, uh, you could play a single note more than once and it won't sound like a machine gun. One thing I should point out right now actually is I've, I've got quite a lot of reverb on this um, basically because it's one of those uh, dry sounding a very kind of almost jazzy sounding instrument you know and in the context of a, an orchestral um, thing like this very much in the same way as uh, I, th I think it's sam sample modeling's got one with very dry instruments, with very, sorry, with very dry instruments, you kind of need to um, douse them in reverb, even with the stage on. Right? You can hear that's completely dry. With the stage on, a little bit of reverb. You know, so that's a, a very kind of, uh, you know, just to stay, it, it, it puts it instantly in a room. But when you put that in context with uh, like the string section, there's something almost dead about it. I mean, th this isn't this isn't the fault of the library itself. This is just one of the things you get in, in sample libraries. If you've got a dry, uh, not yeah, okay. If you've got like a dry sample or a close mic sample with no reverb in it, it will sit on top of a mix as opposed to in it. So if you, if you listen to this, the trumpet will actually sound like it's on top of the mix as opposed to part of it. As compared to you throw a load of reverb on it. As you can hear, it instantly sounds like it's part of the um, the ensemble. The ensemble. I mean, and I'm using my uh, for anybody who wants to copy what I did here. I'm using uh, Arts Acoustic Reverb, the Brass Section Studio Hall. I always bump up the uh, the decay a little bit, just an extra bit of room. And then, what a, a good technique for if you're using um, dry or close samples like this is uh, you you want to get a a reverb that's got a dry and a wet signal essentially and you want to dial back the dry a little bit i mean if i push it forward you're still getting that very you, you could still hear it's a close sound but the more you dial back the the less you hear the closeness so basically you're using the dry just to give it um you're almost controlling the attack almost of the instrument like the more you dial it back the more washy it becomes like this So around here, uh, just a little bit more, around like minus three dB here, is uh, just enough, just enough close mic to give it a kind of presence within the mix without it just being completely verbed over. So, um, so yeah, I, I got completely sidetracked there, but we'll carry on where we were. So, what did I do with the track? So, the first thing I did is I, is I wrote the melody on the trumpet, da 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 da, and then I layered it up with. Uh, this is a, a common orchestrational thing. So I layered it with a high string, which sounds like this. Which gives, um, I mean, for those of you who don't know much about orchestration, like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no expert, but when, uh, when you layer two sounds together, you essentially make a new kind of sonic character. So by itself, I mean, if I take out the string, uh, so this is what it sounds like with the string. If I take the string out, 
you can hear it's missing it's it's missing like part of its identity uh, it's actually layered with um, with vocal as well if i take that off as well you can hear it loses a little bit of identity that's uh so if i put that back in and you listen to uh layered with the string So up to this point, it's been relatively similar. And then I jump into a kind of, uh, so th th on the trumpet, there's a rise. Like that. And because uh, what one of the little tricks I did here is, is basically I've had this high string here, as you can see, pretty much doubling what the trumpet's been playing. But here, um, because your ear is so used to following, uh, it, so used to hearing the string, doubling the trumpet what I did is I actually um, harmonize the trumpet with the same string so it's almost not jarring but it's like uh, catch you a little bit off guard so it adds a little bit more kind of oomph to the rise you know I, I mean you, you may disagree that may have sounded awful but, but uh, if I just put them so you can actually hear what the harmony sounds like. So you go, there's a, there's a sage bit of advice. If, if uh, you know, if you're doubling something in the orchestration, when you come to a, you know, a very melodic part, you can change what you've been doubling it with to harmonize it and it kind of stands out a little bit more um on the strings here i've got a bit of a bit of a counter so As you can hear around this section here where where uh, i've got the violin basically doing a harmony the cello kind of picks up the slack and doubles it so that um so you're not completely losing uh like i was mentioning at the beginning the identity of that line and it's also being doubled perfectly on the choir it's not german just the choir that's very quiet but And yeah, and doubling. So that's uh, that's basically that section. So if we go back to the trumpet and just take a look at, whoa, that's not, that's my percussion. So if we <laughs> move up to the brass back and just take a look at what we've been doing. Um, one thing I should mention while it's here actually is because uh, whenever you put a lot of reverb on something, you've got to remember that you're essentially layering frequencies of that sound back on itself, but with a delay on it. That's kind of what a reverb is. It's when the sound goes out and bounces back. That's what reverb is. And when you get that, sometimes you um, you end up putting a lot of, uh, you end up getting a lot of resonant frequencies. So if I play. You know, and so uh, it's always a good idea to put an EQ after your, uh, just a corrective EQ. So it doesn't have to be major hard. It doesn't have to be like a really strong re uh, EQ. It can just be a soft one, like Ableton's built in one, just to like tame those frequencies back to what they were before. You know. So just a little bit of corrective EQ to put it back, you know, in context of the mix. I'm trying to add uh, mixing advice, by the way. A lot of people say that I should say how I mix, but I most of the time I just do and I don't think, so I'll try and pick up on it as I go. So that's pretty much the section. I mean, the other parts in this intro are, you know, my percussion, which sounds like this. You know, very, very kind of just 
dragging it along. And an out of tune chime, you know, as you do. So moving on slowly to the uh, second section. We've got, uh, it just sounds like this for those of you who forgot. What I wanted to do with the second section, so this this beginning part, I showed the trumpet in like a kind of heroic, you know, this is what it sounds like when it's sitting at the front of a mix, you know. I'm using this as a, as a melodic instrument. And then what I wanted to do is just show it blending more into the background in the second half. And as you may have heard, it didn't blend <laughs> so much blend to the background. I mean, it still kind of sounds very melodic. And that, that's something I wanted to bring up right now. But then uh, so what one thing that initially um, not bothered me, but one of the things I noticed about the library, I mean, is that the dy dynamic uh, range of it that isn't actually that great. So um, I've got on the mod wheel i have uh vibrato so if i just hold a note and then turn up the mod wheel if you look down the bottom here you'll see the mod wheel go up maybe you won't it's because i got the wrong instrument selected yeah i had anyway so if you watch the mod wheel let's turn this. So it's a very kind of subtle um, vibrato in, but um, the uh, the volume of the actual like the, the dynamics of the actual patch are on uh, CC eleven CC. They're, they're on the expression. That is CC eleven, isn't it? I'm having a bit of a brain moment. Yeah, CC eleven. So it's on the expression. And uh, one thing I notice is like dynamically there isn't actually that mm, there isn't that much range. So. I mean, that's as far down as it goes. And I just wanted to draw your attention to that because if you've got the library now, um, is not to worry about it, basically, because uh, I, I was talking to the guys at Embertone and they supplied me with a uh, with a, a beta, uh, you know, like basically a work in progress of... Um, there's a few different changes coming, but the one I, I wanted to draw your attention to initially was the... Um, was the dynamics so they are actually working on it i didn't use it so much in this because it could still use um could still use some tweaks i was getting a lot more resonance peaks with it so it just needs a little as you can hear now it goes down to full silent so if i was blending into the background you know it, where, where it before it was at like that now i could be more like And as you can hear, like where it still needs a bit of tweaking. I mean, this is completely irrelevant because you guys obviously won't get the beta. You'll get the finished version. I'm just saying why I didn't use it in this track. So what, one, of, one of the negatives that I had against this library coming into this was that the dynamic range um, wasn't that great. However, I, it, it was kind of them to let me know that it is being worked on for um, the 1.1 update, which is coming uh, very soon, I believe, uh, maybe even like from this, you know, the, the moment this video goes out, like a couple of weeks or something. So, uh, so yeah, so let's uh, take a listen to another part, which is the staccato. So, like I mentioned, the, the Chapman comes with three um, articulations, legato, staccato and poly sustain. So in this track, uh, I doubled. So I've, I didn't have much room for the staccato, but it sounds like this. turn off the reverb because reverb doesn't work too nicely with short notes by themselves and it's got a very kind of sharp attack which And 
as you can hear, it's got quite a few. Um, it's got quite a few round robins by the sounds of it, because it doesn't sound like a machine gun if you play relatively fast. So that's one thing I wanted to show. And the other, um, I didn't actually use this in this track, but uh, the poly sustain is basically um, all the notes, but without um, legato. So if I was to go from there to there, but hold it, you would end up with a chord. Well, so basically this is like your, your, your pad, like you can make pads of trumpets, you know, so almost as though you've got a trumpet section. You know? In fact, I'll do that on the um, the non-beta version. So we'll just take a listen. Here we go. Yeah, we could play like that. One one of the things I actually like about the poly sustain is this library works well with itself. Um, that's that's kind of a weird principle to say, but so um, sometimes you'll get like a solo instrument that lets you turn off the legato. But when you play two notes together, it sounds like the same instrument playing two notes. But whereas this one's kind of. It, it feels like almost like they're separate instruments, if that makes sense. So it sounds like you've almost got two different patches playing. So that's uh, that's what a nice little um, nice little thing. But uh, yeah, so let me just go back. So the staccato. So in this section, I have a little, um, it's very quiet, but I'll show you why. I'll turn it up a little bit just so you can hear it for now. Mute this. Now that sounds like a very weird kind of rhythm to have, but I actually have um, on my percussion, it's doubling a little thing going like this. That's actually out of time. I should probably fix that. And what I'm using the trumpet for here is um, layering. So, you know, if you've seen my videos before, you know I'm a big ad advocate. I'm a big, I don't know, champion for um, layering. And I can't overestimate, underestimate? I can't, I can't, whatever. Um, ha say how important enough that I'm really bad with English today, how, uh, how important layering is. And so what I've done here is I'm basically using the trumpet as like the sound of a trumpet, like the tone of trumpet with this percussive part. So, and it's on three parts. I just wanted to create this kind of otherworldly kind of, uh, you know, this kind of dreamy kind of thing. So this is layered up with, um, you know the trumpets laid up with that's um stick stick to cello and then a celeste and all three together you kind of get this get a very kind of otherworldly kind of tone which is what I was doing um, in that section and as you can hear like I mentioned the uh, the trumpet is basically just singing along in the background with um, with the string section the string section is just doing you know a nice simple um,
so it's just singing along you know within that um dreamy atmosphere so i th this second section actually started with the uh, you know the And of course, I program all my percussion in. Um, like <laughs> that, that's one thing I, I, you know, I also like to say is if you use loops, um, don't just throw a loop down. You know, listen to what the loop's actually playing, and then layer your instruments with the loop. Then it will sound more musical. Or do it the other way around. Whereas I start with, you know, I started with these two, and then I built the loops. As you can hear, you know, I'm using polyrhythms and such to create like this kind of off kilter, otherworldly vibe. And then, you know, the percussion's just going, doing its biggie thing. You can almost hear, like, if you listen to the beginning of the percussion, you can almost hear the da da ba da. Da 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 ba da da. So it's just putting the accents with everything so that when you play them together, you get. And you see, one of the things you'll notice there is that's very low in the mix. It's a very subtle thing, but this whole track grooves because of these staccato parts, you know. I mean, I, it, it would still work if I just put the melody over the top like this. So as you can hear, you know, it's a, a very cool little thing. And one thing, I mean, I mean, I mentioned it briefly at the beginning. I said I'd come back to it, so I'll come back to it now. Because who needs structure and order in a video, hey? So, um, what? Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, the legato. Now, there's there's all sorts of different types of legatos. There's simulated legato, there's real legato, true legato, all these kinds of things. And I think this is what you would... I mean, I personally, they all kind of... They, they mean nothing to us. All, all that matters to us as composers is how does it sound. And one of the things about Chapman Trumpet, it, it, like I say, it's, it's just a single instrument, but they seem to have taken a lot of time getting these legatos to sound uh, snappy. Like... Now, one th there is a little bit of like um, almost lag on legato. Like, uh, so when, when I push, like, so if I'm doing like a, you know, a, 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 G, a, a flat to E flat. That's, uh, when I push, when I push the A flat, uh, sorry, when I push the E flat after the A flat, there's like a slide up to the note. So, uh, that, that, that doesn't happen before the note. So the slide it actually takes away the, the attack of um of the note let me show you so if as you can see here this note see how the notes are kind of hanging just before the beat here that's to compensate for the legato transition so because from like here if you look where that from like go with the dotted line so if you from like here to here is is the transition so you need to kind of account for that because if you don't then everything will sound like it's pushed back behind the beat so you know just slide things a little bit it's not even by much just and that's just to accommodate but that's that's one of the things you get with with these legato transitions because it's not simulated you know it's not scripted you need to account time for it so But I think I think that's a, you know that's like only a small price to pay because that kind of that snappiness within the within the actual transition sounds very kind of realistic. And while I'm never like when I'm writing music, I never think all oh, this needs to sound real. It needs to sound good. And there's something almost pleasing about that snappiness. And maybe the realism is pleasing to the ear because it doesn't sound wrong. Like you know if you hear someone talking. Uh, 
it's one of the main reasons that that, that vocal lo- libraries are so hard to uh, you know like choir libraries and things because the human voice if there's something even s- slightly wrong with it it just sounds weird to us i, I think it's like the or- the audio version of the uncanny valley where something becomes almost like something that's not real becomes almost real it seems so weird and alien to us and almost scary i'm not saying this this library's scary don't get me wrong it's not like a yeah you're not going to have nightmares over the chapman trumpet what i've gone off anyway um so yeah it's I think because um, that transition is so realistic sounding, it sounds it doesn't sound wrong. So it, therefore, it sounds more pleasing. So it's just one of those. Oh, it doesn't go up to that note. It goes, the range of the Chapman trumpet is actually quite, quite nice. It goes down from... Dogs of War. I love that track. That's that's like my go-to song. It's by Christopher Lennart. Dogs of War. You, you should check it out. That's that's my go-to brass um, standard. Like if I get a brass library, I always compare it to that song because it's um, brilliant brass, right? And then this, actually, now I mention it. Now I mention that song. Anybody who knows that song knows how close this this tone is to the real thing. So, yeah. The, the main thing about this library, like I've mentioned a few times, is the tone of it is it's just spot on. And uh, yeah, so finally, finally already, geez. The good thing about these uh, these smaller libraries is they're, they're more manageable to get through. So one of the things that actually surprised me when I downloaded the library was that there was a tuba involved in the trumpet i don't know for a fact if that's everyone or if i just got lucky and i scammed the system somehow but there yeah there was a it says chapman trumpet so i assume you also get a tuba and the tuba is is quite nice sounding actually i mean and it's also got the legato transition would be a good time to mention the fact that each patch comes with you see these little red things down here these are the um, these are key switches so if you push this key on your keyboard it'll change the uh, the actual articulation that you're playing so you know you can play like a trombone probably uh, trombone tuba probably wasn't the best instrument to demonstrate that but you know can't complain i'm i'm terrible at key switching by the way <laughs> i'm not even going to try it. like in in if you're if you actually write a uh, write it into your track it's it's good so yeah in the in the track the tuba's just doing like a sustained bass note see the dynamics So there you go. There's the uh, 
the Chapman trumpet. It feels it feels surreal to be finishing a video so quickly. Um, but I mean, I, as it's only one patch, I mean, that is that's kind of like the, the good and bad thing about it is is it's one one thing. You know, you, you buy the library and it's a, a cheap price. I, I say cheap, but that isn't to devalue the actual instrument itself. The instrument is a really great sounding instrument. I mean, when I started playing it, it, the first thing you do when you get a new patch is you sit down and you push a couple of keys. You know, that's what everybody does. And the first thing I did is I sat down and I just did what I always do. I did a D to A, you know, I made a minor. Well, I, 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 I did a jump of a fifth. That's the first thing I do in any library. I just go. And I was instantly blown away just by the sound of the sound of the actual instrument. And that's what's important in these kinds of things. So, I mean, the good thing about it is, is because it's low in price, not cheap as in, you know, like I say, not to devalue with the instrument. It's a cheap, uh, in, you know, it's a cheap thing to buy, but you're getting, you know, you're getting some good quality there, in my opinion, you know, some good sound. So if you're in the, if you're in the market for a solo trumpet, that's, that can either, you know, that you want to stand out front of a mix, you know, I say, you know, a lot, we can just ignore that though. So if, you, if you're looking for a trumpet, you know, to stand at the front of a mix and to just have that really kind of strong, strong tone to it, you know, it's a perfect place to go. So, I mean, it's, I think it's, I should have looked, looked for the website beforehand, but it's embertone.com. If that's wrong, just Google embertone Chapman trumpet and you'll come across it. And yeah, and one of the things about it, like I like I mentioned, is that it, it comes at you very dry. I mean, out of the box, it sounds like you know, like this. Just again, and you know, so that's a very kind of jazzy. You know, if you wanna, if you're looking for a trumpet for jazz as well, you know. It's got you covered pretty much. Um, and yeah, and it's also, if you throw a bit of reverb on it, you know, the tone still cuts through, like knife through butter. Very flexible. So yeah, oh, you know, all in all, I'm I'm very pleased with this. You know, it's it's a great little instrument. And one of the main reasons behind me, me even doing this video was I, I, I think that more people should be aware of Ember Tone as in, you know, as a sampling entity, you know, because they're, they're a relatively new company and the instruments they've got out are all like this, you know, they're, they're, they're cheap, cheaply priced, but the quality you're getting for your money is, is so, you know, you're getting so much quality for such a small amount of money. I thought that more people should know about them because these are the little things that, that people buy to add that extra little bit of quality to their music. And they don't necessarily always tell people where they're getting it from. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I know there's, there's tons of us who always listen to other people's music and go, what is that sound? And I get the feeling that a lot of tracks are going to start using these little, um, these little ember tone instruments. And, you know, I'm hoping, and I'm sure you guys are as well, that they keep up the kind of quality that they're doing and they keep rolling with it. So, uh, I hope you guys have found this little, uh, I assume it's short. I, I can't see the runtime, but this uh, this little overview of the track, and I tried to show you a bit more, like people request, I tried to show you a bit more of how I actually put the track together and not just the instrument all the time. So I hope you found it interesting, if not at least entertaining. If, if neither of those, I'm surprised you're still watching, but I'm sorry for wasting your time. Um, so yeah, cheers for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers, bye.